Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the BRICS. Now the financial performance of Russian businesses across all sectors of the economy have shown a really positive trend with profits returning to growth. According to reports, profits for the period between January and May of this year increased by 13% to reach 13 trillion rubles. Now, this profit growth occurred across all sectors with construction, oil production and the automotive industries being the main drivers of the growth this year. Now, analysts have highlighted that the financial results of the companies have improved in light of their adaption to the sanctions restrictions and a surge in the construction act activity that was driven by the anticipation of the cancellation of preferential mortgages. Additionally, <coughs> import substitution, high domestic demand resulting from wage increases have obviously contributed to this growth. Now, what were the profits of Russian companies? Well, the total profits for the period from January to May 2024 increased by 13.6% from 11.3 trillion rubles to 13 trillion rubles. With 89 rubles to the dollar, you can work out the figures. They're about 115 billion and 135 billion. Now, I got this information from the report Comments on the State and Business by Alexei Kuznetsov, who's an expert at the Higher School of Economics Development Centre. Now, his calculations were based on data from the Russian Federal State uh, Statistics Service, Rostat. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website seobricksinsight.com, and that will help me further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, and that's done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm going to thank you all now in advance. Now, in particular, uh, on profits, there was a 69% increase in the construction center, sector. The oil and gas extraction center, along with the automotive industry, also saw a significant increase of around 66 and 65% uh, uh, <coughs> consecutively. Also, there was a 44% increase in other oil and gas extractive sectors, that's the copper, coal, nickel, etc. And a 30% increase in agriculture. Now, what were the reasons for this growth? Well, despite the challenges posed by the sanctions and other external factors like logistics, the trend continues to indicate a consistent growth trajectory for domestic industries, according to The Economist and Moscow Regional Branch Head of Doloya, Russia, Alexei Kuznyaki. Now, for context, enterprise profits for the period one year earlier, that's January to May in 2023, um, they showed a decrease of 21% compared to the previous five months of 2022. Now, according to Andrei Onyshenko, who's director of the Transformation and Development of the Economy Agency, the low base is only just one of the reasons for these high dynamics. So what is driving up profits in Russia? Well, the companies can, can really be achieved and attributed to a number of favorable factors in 2024. I mean, they are the results of the processes that began around two and a half years ago, and they're now just becoming apparent. And particularly, enterprises have received a boost against the backdrop of import substitution, which I've covered in many uh, videos, since many uh, Western competitors left the market and they've filled that niche. Now, they've sanctions forced businesses to unite, restructure the production, their technological, financial and logistics processes. Now, one factor that has to be mentioned, that compared to Western companies, the cost of production across all sectors is much lower due to energy costs. I mean, the cost of electricity in Russia, for example, is seven times lower than in Germany. So if you're making bricks for construction, it's much cheaper as is producing concrete due to the low cost of energy in this intensive energy industrial sector. In the food processing and manufacturing sector, where energy is a significant part of the cost, having cheap energy means lower costs. That's also relevant across all industrial sectors, and it really has to be taken into account. Now, as for logistics, the much lower cost of transportation due to the much lower fuel cost is a major benefit and adds to the profitability of any company. 
Also, the prominence of construction is not a mere coincidence. The groundwork for that was laid several years ago, according to Evgeny Druzin, who's General Director of Open City. <clears throat> he says the primary factors driving that growth were the preferential mortgages and the state supported in the residential retail sector. Many Russians were keen to purchase apartments before the new building programme and subsidies were cancelled. Now, according to the central bank, 673,000 mortgage loans were taken out by citizens in the first half of 2024, and that accounted to almost 13 trillion rubles, which is a fair chunk of change. Now, furthermore, developers have benefited also from the large-scale infrastructure projects and the development of landscaping. Now, you just have to look at the new highway between Moscow and St. Petersburg to see an example of that. Now, the situation with companies in the mineral extraction sector was also favourable. I mean, the price of Russian oil increased from an average of $70 a barrel to $78 uh, in April. And that's according to the data from the Higher School of Economics. Uh, Onyshenko also highlighted the positive impact of oil and gas exports. I mean, another factor is the weakening you know, of the, the ruble exchange rate. And by the end of the first five months of 2024, it had decreased by about 5% compared to the previous year, with the ruble rate around $90, uh, 90 rubles per dollar. Now, that had a positive income, on the, obviously, on the income and profits of exporting companies. Now, uh, some of that growth in profits is accelerated advanced funding from the Russian budget. I mean, additionally, the agricultural sector is going through a very positive trend with grain trade and particularly the Asian markets expanding and Russia's exporting more stuff to China. I mean, grain exports and food products were up by 1.7 times in less than a year. Plus, the first half of the year saw a significant expansion in real incomes, leading to uh, creating a lending and conducive environment for consumer spending. And that drove up further profits for various Russian enterprises. Now, uh, one of the other things is when you've got more money in your pocket, like the real disposable income of Russians, and that's exclusive of inflation and mandatory payments, they were up by 5.8%. That's 5% more money in your pocket between January and March 2024. Now, let's look at what factors could potentially impede the further growth of profits. According to Konezniak of Dalot Verusia, he anticipates that the positive financial results for companies will continue to be supported by high domestic consumption. Another factor that supports the growth is the expansion of export contracts with countries of the SCO, the BRICS and Latin America, particularly as the prices that they get for the raw materials and other commodities is relatively high. I mean, Dennis Palieve uh, anticipates that these positive dynamics will continue for the next few years. Although, in the second half of the year, there probably will be uh, a slowdown in the trend in construction, simply because of the ending of the subsidies of uh, mortgages. I mean, the cancellation of the preferential mortgages, as well as the growth of the key rate of interest, which will result in the slowdown in demand. Now, other factors that are likely to have a negative impact on the, the profits of uh, just property developers. Now, research also uh, cited the growth of the key interest rate uh, to 18% as a p potential impediment to industrial growth. And the central bank has also not ruled out the possibility of increasing that to 20%. Now, increasing financing costs will possibly have a negative impact on companies' profitability. However, do bear in mind that most Russian companies currently are using profits for their investment rather than borrowing at high rates to fund their expansion. Plus, of course, there are numerous government uh, grants and subsidies available as part of the import substitution and uh, industrial self-sufficiency program available. That's to build Russia's own industrial sovereignty. Uh, sovereignty. So for the potential risks are actually worth talking about, and that's the shortage of labor. I mean, Russia has a low unemployment rate of only 2.4%. Now, equipment is obviously aging and there's going to be some difficulties importing new equipment from the West. So these factors could limit the trend towards profit growth. 
However, that said, the future for most sectors of the Russian economy are looking very positive, and that is more than can be said for those who impose the sanctions on Russia, particularly in Europe. Now, thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobrexinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Thank you, and I'll see you all again.